So uh, the real Shiro's here are these amazing people who've, who are restaurant servers and bartenders and workers who've come from all over the country. Um, they're here today from New York and from Michigan and from Washington, D.C. and from Los Angeles and New Orleans. And they've come out because they are the rising American electorate. They are the face of the future. They are the women of color that are going to determine the future of every next election in the United States. They're the people who serve us, the women who serve us. So I hope you get a chance. We're all wearing these shirts. I hope you get a chance to talk to them throughout the day um, because we're all here together uh, to say enough is enough. So uh, a little bit about what we do, what we fight for. We represent right now the number one fastest growing private sector employer in the United States. We just hit the 13 million worker mark in the restaurant industry. That means one in 11 American workers currently works in the industry and one in two Americans and one in two women has worked in this industry at some point in our lifetimes. How many people in the room have worked in restaurants at some point in your lifetime? Look around the room. We are the fastest growing industry in America, and yet we are the absolute bottom of the barrel, lowest paying. That is because of the money, power, and influence of a trade lobby called the National Restaurant Association. We call it the other NRA. It represents the Fortune 500 chains, the Applebee's, the IHOPs, the Olive Gardens. It's been around, it turns out, since emancipation of slavery, when it first demanded the right to hire newly freed slaves, mostly women, and not pay them anything at all and let them live on this newfangled idea that had come from Europe called a tip. And that idea that a mostly black female workforce could get a zero dollar wage was made law in 1938 as part of the New Deal, which says everybody now has the right to a minimum wage except for tipped workers who get a zero dollar wage as long as tips bring them to the full minimum wage, a direct legacy of slavery. And we went from zero dollars in 1938 to the whopping two dollars and 13 cents an hour, which is the current federal minimum wage for tipped workers in the United States in 2018. There were multiple speakers who said, I worked at $2 or $1 or whatever in their youth. It is still that wage today in 2018, a $2 increase over 80 years. How is that possible? It's possible because this is a workforce of women. And do I need to say more than the fact that the largest employer of women in America pays $2 an hour to its workforce. What more do we need to know in terms of how much corporate America values us, values our labor, values us as human beings, than the fact that we get paid $2 an hour? And when you have a majority female workforce working for 2 and $3 an hour in 43 states in the United States, you have a workforce that faces literally and statistically the highest rates of sexual harassment of any industry because we must tolerate all kinds of inappropriate customer behavior to feed our families and tips. Almost half of us are single mothers feeding our families on tips. We got an enormous boost and such a wonderful moment with Me Too and Time's Up. And we want to thank our sisters in so many different sectors, not just Hollywood, but domestic workers and farm workers. And we all stood together. Our voices and stories were uplifted. And as a result, we had been fighting to get rid of this absurd and ridiculous minimum wage of $2. And as a result, Governor Cuomo announced earlier this year that he would make New York the eighth state to eliminate this ridiculous sub-minimum wage for tipped workers. It was a huge victory. He hasn't done it yet. He will do it any day now. But in June, we actually won this issue on the ballot in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, raising the wage from $3 to $15 in June. But the biggest story is Michigan, where we mobilized 400,000 people to get this on the ballot, to get rid of the wage of $3 in Michigan and raise these women's wages to $12 an hour. We got all the signatures. We were ordered to be on the ballot. And the Tea Party Republican legislature, out of fear that we would drive women of color to the polls, made our ballot measure law. Tripled the wages for women in Michigan. 
from $3 to $3.52 to $12 just to keep us from going to the polls. So I want you to know how powerful we are. We're so powerful, we can make Republicans triple women's wages. They're so afraid that we will vote. They will do anything to keep us from voting. And we're going to keep fighting. We're mobilizing the 435,000 restaurant workers in Michigan. And by the way, we lost that state to Trump by just 11,000 votes. And there are 435,000 restaurant workers, most of whom don't vote, that we are mobilizing to go to the polls saying, you want to raise, but if you want to keep it, you got to go vote. So we know, because we're doing it in Michigan, and we're seeing it, that we have enormous power. We're sitting on 13 million people, mostly women, mostly women of color, who don't vote, who can't vote, who feel completely disengaged from the political system. Wouldn't you, if every party, every candidate left you behind at 2 and $3 an hour, wouldn't you feel completely disengaged from the political system? So we, ha we are mobilizing people to vote themselves a raise it, you know, in a way that no candidate, and I love all the candidates in the room, but no candidate and no amount of canvassing is going to get our people out to the polls like actually being able to vote themselves a raise and an end to sexual harassment. Here in California, we're taking it a step further. We've got one fair wage 2.0. We already have a wage, but we need to fight to end racial, racial segregation in our restaurants. And we're going to fight to protect workers' tips and gratuities. For all of you Californians, we need your help. We're moving that legislation next year. But we are under threat. We are winning everywhere. And I have to give you a warning, because this is difficult to hear. Every time our women stand up and say, we need, a, we need a wage, all we're asking for is a wage like everybody else. And they share their stories of what it's like to live on tips. And they share their stories of sexual harassment. They get attacked. We've been attacked. Death threats, millions of dollars in lawsuits, going after our funders at their homes, putting my children's pictures up on their attack websites. And last night, again, a warning. Last night, one of our members received a very severe death threat. She testified in Washington, D.C. at a hearing that was packed to the gills with people demanding that the D.C. Council not overturn the will of the people, the measure we just won, raising the wage from 3 to $15. And this is what people said, the men who are fighting us, who are attacking us, said online. I'm going to call her Thelma. Would you like some information on Thelma? She needs to have her life ruined. I want to see the complete destruction of her. I want to see her have another mental meltdown. I have worked with be her before and have her believing I am her friend. She is a shit bag of C-U-N-T and deserves to have her life destroyed. And I would love to help you do that. How low and dirty do you want to get with her? This is what happens when women of color stand up and say, I need a wage. Time is up. I need a wage. I will not be disrespected. If you are truly going up against the powerful forces that control our lives, those corporate powers, this is the pushback that we get. We knew we had to expect this because we're actually threatening the most powerful forces in America, corporate control. So we need your help. We really need your help, as you can see. We are asking everybody to go to our website, Rock, rock Action, uh, I'm sorry, One Fair Wage slash Rock Action. One Fair Wage slash, slash Action. One Fair Wage slash Action, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm emotional after reading that. Because <sighs> I've gotten similar messages myself, so it, it's, it's very painful. So onefairwage.org slash action, onefairwage.org slash action. We need you to sign up. We need you to join us because one thing is true. Yes, we are a powerful group of people. Yes, we can determine the future of this country, but we will face this kind of pushback as we do it. We must expect it, and we have to stand together as we go forward to actually win back our country. Thank you.